This is Moonstalker at That Place for Walkthroughs with Toth Amel of Dragon Age Origins. Toth is thinking about going to Redcliffe Castle to see Arl Eamon. Something on your mind? Yes, me too. And I got the feeling at the end there that it saw us, was aware of us, whatever you want to call it. Could have just been my imagination, I suppose. What do you think? I think the we need to be extra careful. I thought we were already being extra careful. Does that mean we have to be extra, extra careful now? Great. And there I was enjoying my nap. I guess one thing is certain, at least, isn't it? It's official. This is a blight. Something on your mind? I have some questions, Alistair. Of course. Um. Oh. Can you teach others to be a Templar? Others, yes, but not yourself. I need someone who's trained first as a warrior. It's as much about discipline as anything. I guess if I'm going to give up Chantry secrets, I may as well go all the way. Send whoever you want trained to me in camp, and I'll see what I can do. Thank you, Alistair. What say you? Here to answer some questions. By all means. Do you actually enjoy being an assassin? And why not? There are many things to enjoy about being a crow in Antiva. You are respected, you are feared, the authorities go out of their way to overlook your trespasses, even the rewards are nothing to turn your nose up at. As for the killing part, well, some people simply need assassinating. Or do you disagree? No, you're probably right about that. I often find myself the instrument of fate, ending these lives for one necessity or another. I console myself with the notion that most of them had it coming. As far as enjoying the act of killing itself, why not? There is a certain artistry to the deed, the pleasure of sinking your blade into their flesh and knowing that their life is in your hands. I know what you mean. There are many things I did not enjoy about being a crow, of course. Having no choice, being treated as an expendable commodity, the rules, oh, so many rules. But simply being an assassin, I like it just fine. I will continue to do it if I can, even if I am not a crow. Honestly, could you picture me doing something else? No, I suppose not. Hmm. Somehow that sounds less complimentary than I had anticipated. Of course, all these thoughts are moot. Chances are still good that you and I will perish, eaten by darkspawn or slain by the crows at some point. Very gruesomely, I imagine. But it is pleasant enough to chat about. Come, let's move on while our boots still have some wear in them. Very well. <sighs> No end to these blasted things. <laughs> Right. <laughs> 
Run while you still can! Can I get you a ladder so you can get off my back? All right, all right. Let's see some. <laughs> Jeez. These elves are very weak. Blood! What a shame. Got it. I thought I saw a traveler coming down the road, though I scarcely believed it. Have you come to help us? I... what do you mean? Is there a problem? So you... you don't know? Has nobody out there heard? What are you talking about? Heard what? We're under attack. Monsters come out of the castle every night and attack us until dawn. Everyone's been fighting and dying. We've no army to defend us, no Arl and no king to send us help. So many are dead, and those left are terrified they're next. I should take you to Ban Tegan. He's all that's holding us together. He'll want to see you. He's just over there in the Chantry. Please, come. Ah, Thomas. Who is this with you? No simple traveler, obviously. No, my lord. He just arrived. And I thought you would want to see him. Well done, Thomas. Greetings, my good man. My name is Tegan, Ban of Rainosphere, brother to the Arl. You don't strike me as the usual pilgrim or wanderer. Can I ask who you are and why you've come? I am a Grey Warden, here to speak to Arl Eamon. A Grey Warden? I thought you all died along with my nephew. At least that is what Loghain would have us believe. Your nephew? I refer to Caelan, of course. Our sister was Queen Rowan, King Merrick's wife and Caelan's mother. Make her rest her soul. There is a Grey Warden who goes by the name of Alistair. Does he yet live? He's alive. He travels with me, in fact. He does? Finally, some good news amidst all the bad. Thank you. You're here to see my brother. Unfortunately, that might be a problem. Eamon is gravely ill. No one has heard from the castle in days. No guards patrol the walls, and no one has responded to my shouts. The attack started a few nights ago. Evil things surged from the castle. We drove them back, but many perished during the assault. I can help you drive them back. Thank you. Thank you. This means more to me than you can guess. Thomas, please tell Murdoch what transpired. Then return to your post. Yes, my lord. Now then, there is much to do before night falls. I put two men in charge of the defense outside. Murdoch, the village mayor, is outside the Chantry. Sir Perth, one of Eamon's knights, is just up the cliff at the windmill, watching the castle. You may discuss with them the preparations for the coming battle. I'm on my way. Very well. Luck be with you, my friend. Let us pray. Why haven't Blessed my art thou who exists yet. in the Maker's sight. They're... Blessed art thou who They're seeks gone, his forgiveness. Blessed gone art thou who seeks his when return. Blessed is the prophetess, his daughter.
sacrificed the holy flame. I'm scared, Mother. Yes. The bad men coming? I'm sorry to tell you that your husband has perished. I feared this day would come. Soon, darling. Don't worry. Everything will be all right. I want to go home. Where is Father? Why can't we go home? I already Got it. told you. Father is outside defending the village from the bad men. We must stay here and be brave. Can you do that? You're a Grey Warden, right? Were you in Ostagar? In the Kokari Wilds? My husband and son went there to bring the Chant of Light to the Chastened. But I haven't heard from them since. Are you Jetta? I am. You've heard of me? I have something here from your husband. Oh? Oh, his lockbox. If you're bringing me this... Oh no, I'm sorry. Thank you so much for bringing this to me. It means a lot to make his blessings upon you. I... I guess so. I'm so scared, Father. Sorry. What are we going to do? Am I bothering you? I'll, I'll try to be more quiet. Who are you? My, my name's Caitlin, my lord. Pardon me, but... Are you really a mage? The kind that casts spells and everything? Is there another kind? No. No, I, I don't suppose there is. You're very handsome. I, I never would have... I mean, I didn't expect... <laughs> never mind. Are you going to help us? Everyone says we're going to die tonight. You're not all going to die. Don't say that. You... You're very kind to say that. I wish I could believe you. Is there anything I can do? It's my brother Bevin. He ran off, maybe tried to leave the village. I'm so scared those things got him. Why would he run off? Do you know? He said something about saving mother. He's just a little boy. He doesn't understand she's gone. I hope he didn't try to go to the castle. Oh, that would be awful. Don't worry. I will look for him. You will? Thank you so much. Please find him. Silence, girl. Do you want the children to hear you? You know, we don't have the men Still we no know. sign of them coming back from the castle, Murdoch. Tell them to maintain watch. Hello? Knock on the door. Break open the lock. Wonderful. Intruders. I hope you have a good reason for breaking and entering into my home. I'll go where I like, unless you'd like to stop me. No, no. If I wanted to fight, I'd be in the square with the rest of the suicidal morons. The name's Dwin. Pleased to meet you. Now, kindly tell me why you're here. I'm looking for a Kenori sword that you bought. You broke into my house for that? It must be worth something to you, then. How much do you want for it? I'll let it go for six sovereigns. The number's got a nice sound to it, don't you think? All right, I'll pay it. That wasn't so bad, was it? Now, why don't you take your sword and leave? What are you doing shut up in here? Surviving. We have supplies to last for quite some time. And my boys and I can swing a weapon better than any of those fools out there. You should be out there helping to defend the village. They, they are your, your people now. Why? When did this town ever rush to my rescue? Don't be a coward, my friend. You look more than competent. With you out there, they don't really need me, do they? Can't I change your mind? Maybe. Let's hear what you've got. 
I'll put in a good word for you with Van Tegan or the Arl. Hmm. You might just be able to pull that off. Fine. I'll throw in with the militia. For now. You better be out there too when the sun goes down. I'm not fighting for a lost cause, you hear me? Hello? Is someone in there? Go away. This isn't your home. This is my home. My home, you hear me? Bevan, is that you? How... How do you know my name? I spoke to your sister in the Chantry. Did... Did she tell you to take me back to the Chantry? Don't make me go back there. I hate that place. I hate it! Why do you hate the Chantry so much? Everybody's scared. But they tell me I shouldn't be scared. And they tell me I shouldn't be sad that Mother died. I... I don't want to be sad. I'm brave. I'm going to be a hero. I'm going to fight them off. I will. From in there? No. No. I just heard you coming and... I guess that's not very brave of me, is it? I'll... I'll come out now. All right. I came out. You won't hurt me. Will you? I'll go back to the Chantry if you really want. First, tell me what you were doing in there. I... I can't tell you. It's a secret. Are you sure? Maybe I could help you. You could. All right, I guess. I just... Father said I could have his sword when I grew up. It was Grandfather's. And Grandfather was a great dragon slayer. I thought... If I was brave like Grandfather, I could use his sword and... kill the bad people who took Mother. You had the right idea. You are indeed very brave. Thank you, sir. But the sword is too heavy for me. I... guess I'm not as strong as someone like you. You'll grow up eventually. Don't worry about it. That doesn't help us now. Caitlin says everyone's going to die tonight. Not if I'm here to help, they won't. Really? You must be very brave. I wish I was like you. You should go back to your sister now. But I... Oh, all right. I guess. She'll be pretty mad at me. But I'll go. Now is better than later. Bevan said you were the one who found him. I can't possibly repay you. Just stay safe, both of you. The Maker sent you. I just know it. Thank you again. Stop fidgeting. I don't like being out here, Dwin. The mayor's... And well he should. Because you're a good-for-nothing liar. And a thief. Well, we don't so you're the Great Warden, here. are you? I heard they all died with the king. I...
You uh, are mistaken, my friend. We did not all die. So you say. A damn Kunari could walk up and say he was a Grey Warden. I wouldn't know the difference. We aren't going to turn aside anyone who wants to help, though. Don't take me for being an ingrate or nothing. Name's Murdoch, mayor of what's left of the village, providing we aren't all killed and hauled off to the castle tonight. Have faith, good man. We shall defeat this evil together. I... I hope you're right. I've been trying to hold us together, but it isn't easy. Anyhow, you're here, and they tell me you're in charge. What can I do to help? We need what little armor and weapons we got repaired, and quickly, or half of us will be fighting without either. Owen's the only blacksmith who can do it, but the stubborn fool refuses to even talk. If we're to be ready for tonight, we'll need that crotchety bastard's help. I'll see what I can do. But why does he refuse to talk to you? His daughter, Valena, is one of the Alessa's maids, so he hasn't heard from her since this whole business started. He demanded we attack the castle, break down the gate, and force our way in. I said it was impossible, but he wouldn't listen. He's locked himself in the smithy now. I can't force him to do repairs. He said he'd rather die first. I shall see what I can do. I'd appreciate it. If he doesn't help, he'll die like the rest of us. What good will that do anyone then? We're out here because I say we're going to help these people. And since I pay your wages, you go away. Curse you. Leave me in peace. You've already taken everything out of my stores. There's nothing left. I have not taken anything at all. You, you're mistaken. I? You're not Murdoch. Who are you and what are you doing at my door? I prefer not to speak through a door. Can I come in? Mm. All right, all right. Let me undo the locks. All I ask is that you don't make any trouble. Oh, sure, boss. So I let you in. You wanted to talk. Now we're talking. Mind telling me who you are? My name is Toth. I'm a Grey Warden helping Ban Tegan. A Grey Warden, is it? <laughs> it takes all kinds. Anyhow, my name's Owen, though you might already know that. Care to join me as I get besotted? Or is there something in particular you wanted? Why have you locked yourself in the smithy like this? My girl, Valena. It's one of the Alessa's maids, and she's trapped up there in the castle, but the mayor won't send anyone for her. She's been my life since my wife passed on two years ago. Now she's dead, or soon to be. I don't care what happens to me, or the village, or anyone! Or you could work to help to end save her. I'm an old man. Everyone knows we aren't making it through the night. Or are you going to save us? Yes, I am. Is that so? Hmm. Maybe it's the drink talking, but you almost sound like you believe that. It'd do me the world of good to think maybe someone like you could go in and find her. Provided any of us live through the night. And what if she's dead? It would be better than going to my grave wondering. I'll do my best. Not good enough. Murdoch said the same damned thing, and I didn't believe him either. I want a promise. Promise me that you'll look for her, that you'll bring her back to me if you can. I promise you, I shall find her. I'll accept that. It's something to hope for, at least. And I suppose there's no point in me sitting around, is there? Time to relight the forge and get the smithy going, eh? Murdoch will be pleased. If you need anything done, well, just let me know. I've got a lot to do now, so you'll have to excuse me.
Yes, what can I do for you? I have a letter for you from the Blackstone Irregulars. I knew this time would come. I should have listened to my wife. Don't sign that paper, she said. They might pay you a few sovereigns now, but they'll be back. Blast. I'll see you on the front lines, I suppose. Ooh, and trust his grace. No word from the castle. Like all the right, like all that. right. All is still, as it has been for days. And it is an unnatural stillness, as though there is naught in there but death. Say no more. Greetings, Grey Warden. I am as relieved as Bantigan is to see you here. I must admit that I do not quite know how to address you. Is my lord sufficient? Call me Grey Warden, but that is what I am. Grey Warden it is, then. And thank you kindly. I am Sir Perth, until recently in direct service of Arl Eamon of Redcliffe. For now my charge is defending the village from these evil assaults. Would that I had chosen not to seek out the urn of sacred ashes. Perhaps I would have fended off whatever evil befell the castle, or perhaps I would be dead. Ah well, with a great warden aiding our defence, perhaps all is not lost. Is there anything I can do to help you? We have sufficient armor and weapons, but my knights are too few to stand against the monsters without assistance. Perhaps you could approach Mother Hannah in the Chantry for some holy protection against these evil creatures. Otherwise, I do not know what else you could provide beyond your own talents. We're as prepared for the onslaught as we could possibly be, all things considered. I'll see what I can do. That gladdens my heart to hear it. Carry on. As you wish, Grey Warden. Make a watch over you. You are a stranger amongst us, and a mage, I see. Yet you still defend our home in its darkest hour. We are grateful. I cannot stand by while monsters attack the helpless. Not many in these modern days would honestly say the same. You are a man of worth, and the Maker will smile upon you. Allow me to introduce myself. I am revered Mother Hannah, head of this Chantry which for the moment is a place of refuge for these poor villagers. They are terrified of tonight's attack, and I fear these walls will not keep them safe. What can I do to help with your task? Sir Perth needs holy protection for his knights. I have done all I can for them. I pray for them each night and seek the Maker's forgiveness for their sins before they face their deaths. What Sir Perth seeks is something that is not in my power to give. Can't you just bless them? I can pray with them and give them my blessing. But Sir Perth wants me to call upon the Maker to shield them from evil. He refuses to accept there is no such thing. I am no mage, and the Maker will not intervene with his power no matter how strong one's faith may be. Are you saying the Maker has no power? Of course not. The Maker could do whatever he wished, but he does not provide protection against evil just because one thinks he should. The Maker turned his back on us long ago for mankind's folly. We must earn his grace, not demand it. Are you saying Sir Perth is presumptuous? Sir Perth has a good heart and means well. But his hope exceeds reality. All I can do is pray for him and his men. 
What is the harm in giving them hope? You mean you want me to let them think the Maker protects them in a real sense? I will not lie to them like that. But if they think it helps them... I suppose their belief in the Maker's power could inspire them, but it just seems like trickery. Very well. If it keeps them alive, I will do what I must. I have a number of silver cast holy symbols. Tell Sir Perth that he can have them, and that wearing them will confer the Maker's protection. Now please, let me tend to these poor folk. I must do what I can, and I suggest you do the same. Got it. The Knights of Redcliffe are ready to fight at your disposal. You said you wanted holy protection. Have you spoken to the revered mother? Has she offered anything? Mother Hannah has some holy amulets. Would those do? If they are the same as the symbols worn by their priests, well, that would more than suffice. I'm glad I could help. I will send some men to collect the amulets. Please give my regards to Mother Hannah for seeing some sense at last. Carry on. As you wish, Grey Warden. Make a watch over you. Yes. 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 You want? And you'd like... Yes. Immediately. Got it. Alistair, what's this? It's a sock. It's a filthy sock. How did it find its way to my bedroll? Maybe it likes you. Socks are sneaky like that. Anyway, <laughs> it's not mine. It has your name stitched on it. Oh, <laughs> uh, part of Templar training back at the Chantry. The men were uh, always getting their socks mixed up. Anyway, um, sorry about that. I'll take it from you right now. One of my socks is feeling a little damp anyway. A change would be nice. You're going to put it on? It's filthy. And dry. We're not exactly traveling in the lap of luxury here. What hideous habits you've picked up. <clears throat> well, it looks like Owen's finally doing the repairs we need. The damn fool is falling over a drunk and still manages to make smithying look easy. Good enough, I say. I'll inform Bantig and the militia is ready to fight. We'll give those bastards a welcome they won't soon forget. We're not only ready, Murdoch. We're going to win. I hope you're right. We may just be village folk, but we're going to fight like there's no tomorrow. I'd like to talk about Dwin. Thanks for persuading him to come out here. He's going to be a great help. I just know it. Want to discuss something else? There's not much time before sundown. How's morale? The men's spirits are high for now. Far better than I expected, to be honest. 
Dwin's presence makes the men a bit more confident. It helps to know a veteran is on our side tonight. Since you convinced Owen to start repairs, we're pretty well armed now. That is a relief, let me tell you. Overall, I'd say the militia's very ready to fight. Never thought I'd say that, but there you go. Is there anything else? I am ready to make my stand. Let us wait for sundown. Are you sure? There's still time left if you need to talk with Sir Perth or do anything else. No, I'm ready now. Then good luck to you. You'll need it. They're coming! Get to your positions! Make ready! So you can get off my back. Better than that. Then you on top of level. Good for you. Just die already. Oh, my God. 
I'll get on it. Dawn arrives, and we survive the night. We are victorious. And though this victory came at great cost, we must remember none of us would be here were it not for the heroism of these good folk beside me. I thank you, good sir. Truly the Maker smiled on us when he sent you here in our darkest hour. I was happy to help defend the village. Let us bow our heads and give honor to those who gave their lives in defense of Redcliffe. Now they walk with he who is their maker. Long may they know the peace of his love. So let it be. With the maker's favor, the blow we delivered today is enough for me to enter the castle and seek out your Arl. Be wary and watch for signs of renewed attack. We shall return with news as soon as we are able. Now we've no time to waste. Meet me at the mill. We can talk further there. What is that smell? Fish? And something else. Oh, more fish. You saved us. I can't believe we're alive, and it's finally over. What are you going to do now? With mother and father both gone, I suppose they'll send us to an orphanage, maybe separated. At least we're both alive. I won't forget what you did, though. Neither of us will. Thank you. Why do you have to go to an orphanage? With mother and father dead, we don't have any money. I think we have relatives in Denerim, but we've no way to get there. We'll be fine. I promised Mother I'd see to Bevan's safety, and I will. Perhaps I could help you to get to Denerim. Oh, your path is probably much too dangerous for us. There are wagons going there, but it would be expensive. I'm sure 500 silver would cover it. That's incredibly kind of you. This is more than I ever dreamed of. With this, I can hire a wagon to take us to Denerim. We have family there, and they'll take us in for sure now. Come on, Bevin, let's find one now. Make a watch over you. I'll never forget you. Hmm. 
Got it. Make us blessings upon you. Can I get you, you a ladder so you can get off my back? <coughs> Excuse me. Gordon. Horse feathers. Odd how quiet the castle looks from here. You would think there was nobody inside at all. But I shouldn't delay things further. I had a plan. To enter the castle after the village was secure. There is a secret passage here, in the mill, accessible only to my family. That is convenient. Perhaps I should have gone into the castle earlier, but I could not leave the villagers. Maker's breath. Egan. Thank the Maker, you yet live. Isolde, you're alive. How did you... What has happened? I do not have much time to explain. I slipped away from the castle as soon as I saw the battle was over. And I must return quickly. And I... need you to return with me, Tigan. Alone. Why don't we all go to the castle? What? I... Who is this man, Tigan? Were it not for his help, Isolde, I would not be here. I owe him my life. Pardon me, I... I would exchange pleasantries, but... considering the circumstances... Please, Isolde, we had no idea anyone was even alive within the castle. We must have some answers. I know you need more of an explanation, but I... I, I don't know what is safe to tell. Tigan, there is a terrible evil within the castle. The dead waken and, and hunt the living. The mage responsible was caught, but still it continues. And I think Connor is going mad. We have survived, but he won't flee the castle. He has seen so much death. You must help him, Tigan. You are his uncle. You could reason with him. I do not know what else to do. Tell me about this mage you mentioned. He is an infiltrator, I think. Uh, one of the castle staff. We discovered he was poisoning my husband. That is why Eamon fell ill. Eamon was poisoned? He claims an agent of Terran Loghains hired him. He may be lying, however. I cannot say. Why must Tegan go alone? For Connor's sake. I promised I would return quickly and only with Tigan. Promised? Whom did you promise? Something the mage unleashed. So far it allows Eamon, Connor and myself to live. The others were not so fortunate. It killed so many and turned their bodies into walking nightmares. Once it was done with the castle, it struck the village. It wants us to live, but I do not know why. Allowed me to come for you, Tigan, because I begged, because I said Connor needed help. Do you think this evil could be some kind of demon? I... I do not know. Oh, Maker's mercy. Could it truly be a demon? I, I can't let it hurt my Connor. You must come back with me, Tigan. P please. Enough questions. We need to decide what to do. The king is dead, and we need my brother now more than ever. I will return to the castle with you, Isolde. Oh, thank the Maker. Bless you, Tegan. 
Bless you. It seems you have little choice. I have no illusions of dealing with this evil alone. You, on the other hand, have proven quite formidable. Isold, can you excuse us for a moment? We must confer in private before I return to the castle with you. Please do not take too long. I will be by the bridge. Here's what I propose. I go in with Isolde, and you enter the castle using the secret passage. My signet ring unlocks the door. Perhaps I will distract whatever evil is inside and increase your chances of getting in unnoticed. What do you say? What exactly am I supposed to do in there? I wish I knew. I don't know any more about this evil force than Isolde seems to. Sir Perth and his men can watch for danger at the castle entrance. If you can open the gates from within, they can move in and help you. I don't think there's anyone else who can help you. If you choose not to go, then it's up to me to do what I can. Here is my signet ring. It will open the lock on the door in the mill. Whatever you do, Eamon is the priority here. If you have to, just get him out of there. Isolde, me, and anyone else, we are expendable. I do not believe that. I will rescue you all. This I promise. You are a good man. The Maker smiled on me indeed when he sent you to Redcliffe. But I can delay no longer. Allow me to bid you farewell. And good luck. This is Moonstalker at that place for walkthroughs with Toth Amel of Dragon Age Origins. Catch you on the flip side.